Have you ever prayed for something only to get something else in return? Have you ever asked God to bless you with a particular favor, but at the end of the day, you got the opposite of what you asked for? How did you feel? One time I had an experience like that, and it was quite confusing for me. It was quite painful for me. A woman had called me to pray for her son, that the boy was seriously sick. And I remember getting up, leaving what I was doing. I went to the chapel and I knelt down and I prayed for the life of the son to be spared. But unfortunately, the young man lost his life. And when I called her back to ask her, how is he doing? In tears, she said, we have lost him. It was very painful. It was very sad. And I asked God, why? But then I remembered that if God had decided to call him to himself, then he's probably in a better place. I mean, I had to tell myself that even if I don't understand what is going on, I believe that God has granted something better than what I asked for. This is often our experience. When we don't get what we ask for, it's painful. It's even confusing. But then, we just need to trust in God. Because as Peter said in today's gospel passage, Lord, to whom shall we go? I prayed and God did not grant what I asked for. Is there any other thing to do? Is there something else I can do? Is there any God greater than the God we serve? If we don't get answers to our prayers from God, what else do we do? With this, I welcome you to today's episode of the Liturgy of the Word. My name is Father Evaristus Egemeyo Abu, and today is Saturday, the 29th day of April 2023. It is Saturday of the third week of Easter. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father in heaven, as we study your word today, grant us the grace to understand what we read, to believe what we understand, and to practice what we preach. Help us to trust you, even when we don't understand you. May we never give up on you, like the crowds who walked away from Jesus. We make this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, verse 31 to 42. Our responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 116, while our gospel passage comes from the Holy Gospel according to John chapter 6, verse 60 to 69. The first reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, the church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria had peace and was built up. And walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it was multiplied. Now, as Peter went here and there among them all, he came down also to the saints that lived at Lydia. There he found a man named Aeneas, who had been bedridden for eight years and was paralyzed. And Peter said to him, Aeneas! Jesus Christ heals you. Rise and make your bed. And immediately he rose, and all the residents of Lydia and Sharon saw him 
and they turned to the Lord. Now there was at Joppa a disciple named Tabitha, which means Dorcas or Gazelle. She was full of good works and acts of charity. In those days she fell sick and died, and when they had washed her, they laid her in an upper room. Since Lydia was near Joppa, the disciples, hearing that Peter was there, sent two men to him, entreating him, Please come to us without delay. So Peter rose and went with them. And when he had come, they took him to the upper room. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all outside and knelt down and prayed. Then, turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, rise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up, and he gave her his and he gave her his hand and lifted her up. Then, calling the saints and widows, he presented her alive. And it became known throughout all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. How can I repay the Lord for his goodness to me? How can I repay the Lord for his goodness to me? How can I repay the Lord for his goodness to me? The cup of salvation I will raise. I will call on the name of the Lord. How can I repay the Lord for his goodness to me? My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people. How precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? Your servant, Lord, your servant am I, the son of your handmaid. You have loosened my bonds. A thanksgiving sacrifice I make. I will call on the name of the Lord. How can I repay the Lord for his goodness to me? Your words, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory be to you, O Lord. At that time, many of the disciples of Jesus said, This is a hard saying. Who can listen to it? But Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples murmured at it, said to them, Do you take offense at this? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending where he was before? It is the spirit that gives life. The flesh is of no avail. But the words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But there are some of you that do not believe. But Jesus knew from the first those who were that did not believe. And who it was that would betray him. And he said, This is why I told you, that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by the Father. After this, many of his disciples drew back and no longer walked with him. Jesus said to the twelve, Will you also go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And we have believed and have come to know that you are the only one of God. 
the word, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, to whom shall we go? If we don't get what we are asking for from God, where else shall we go? If we feel that God is not being fair to us, or that God has not blessed us, where else can we turn to for blessing? The crowds walked away from Jesus because for them, Jesus was not willing to give them the food that they were asking for. They wanted to be fed again. They wanted to make Jesus a king, king of food, food provider, so to say. And Jesus told them, yes, I am a food provider, but the food that I'm going to give you is my flesh. They did not understand Jesus, and many of them walked away. Even Peter did not understand Jesus. Even Peter himself, at this point, because Jesus had not yet uh, done the Last Supper. Jesus had not yet given anyone this bread of life. So Peter himself did not understand, and yet... He said, to whom shall we go? That is very strong. That you don't understand God and yet you trust in God. That you don't, you don't understand. You see, there's no way we can know everything about God. There's no way we can understand God. But we just need to trust in him. That even when it seems as if we're not getting what we want, we need to trust in him. Even when we are asking for A and we get B, we need to trust that that B is better than the A we are asking for. This is hard. It's difficult. But you cannot be a Christian if you don't have trust in God. Just as Jesus Christ said to Thomas, he said, you believe because you have seen. Happy are those who have not seen and yet they believe. That is the way to follow God, even without sin. We need to follow God, as, this, as this, let me put it this way, we need to follow God blindly. Because in truth, we have no one else to turn to. To whom shall we go? That's a rhetorical question. A question without answer. We have nowhere else to go. As a child of God, you have nowhere else to go. We just need to trust that even if God does not give me what I'm asking for, whatever he has given to me is for my good. May God bless his words in our hearts. May God continue to draw us closer to himself, especially in times of pain, especially in moments when we feel disappointed at God. May it not happen that we become angry with God or that we begin to misbehave just because we feel that God has not done what we are asking for. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you all, both now and forever. Amen. God bless you.